the Gabrielle bag from Chanel. Is it worth it in 2022? Well, let's get into it. If you're strictly into trendy pieces, I'm sorry to say the ship has sailed on the Gabrielle from Chanel. This bag originally came out in 2017, was fairly popular when it first came out, and then it kind of slowly started to fizzle away. And then of course the Chanel 19 came out, which is still a very hyped up and very popular bag. This has kind of just taken a little bit of a back seat. However, if you're looking for something that's practical, functional, maybe a little unconventional as far as the styling, then I would highly recommend the Chanel Gabrielle. No, seriously, hear me out on this one. Aside from my mini reissue, this Gabrielle is probably my most used bag from Chanel. When it comes to the Gabrielle, I would say that that collection has had a little bit of an identity crisis over the past couple years. The different models have changed names or rather sizes. So this, when I originally purchased it, this was considered the medium. Well, then of course they redesigned it. So now this is considered the old medium and now the new large. Basically, the easiest way to tell is counting the number of diamonds that are going vertically. So you'll see one, two, three. There are, of course, different sizes available with this bag. The new medium has fewer diamonds. Of course, there is a small, there is a clutch, but then there are some older discontinued sizes or rather versions that are on the pre-love market that are a lot bigger or rather taller than this one. I believe there's another one that has a handle to it. There's the back pack. There are a lot of different styles. Oh, and the pouches that they have, the card holders. There's a lot within the Gabrielle collection that is kind of out there in the marketplace today. So while it may not be the latest and greatest coming from Chanel, it is still a very popular style in all the different variations that it comes in. In terms of kind of comparing this against a classic flap, this lies somewhere in between the jumbo and the maxi size. So there are going to be similarities as far as a length on one, a height on another, but in terms of the depth, Depth, it's exactly the same as a jumbo or as a maxi. However, you don't have those extra flaps. So really, I feel like you're getting a little bit more bang for your buck with this one, just because the size is gonna be very similar, the capacity is gonna be very similar, but for thousands of dollars less. From a functionality standpoint, the fact that this bag has a zipper closure running along the top of it actually makes it a little unique for Chanel because typically the vast majority of their bags are flat bags. And so with this, I actually love the fact that this is not a flat bag and you do have this open compartment here because while you are using it, it is very easy to just pop your hand in, grab the item that you need and pull it out. You don't have to mess with a flap. You don't have to kind of finagle a finicky little closure. It's just such an incredibly user-friendly bag while you're out and about. As for what'll fit inside this bag, it actually holds quite a lot. I have a full-size sunglass case, a long wallet. I have a card holder. I don't necessarily carry both, but just wanted to show for comparison's sake. I have my cell phone, six ring key holder, and a mini pochette. Now, one of the things I will mention with this bag is I typically, you know, can absolutely carry my essentials plus a couple items, but I would highly recommend not overstuffing this bag, which leads me into wear and tear. I know what the internet has to say about this bag, and I'm sorry, my friend Gabby here and I, we do not agree with it. Now, of course, there are pictures out there. Heck, go over to Fashion File and take a look at the Gabrielles or others out there on the pre-loved market. You look at pictures and the leather just looks like it's made out of chocolate and was left out in the sun in Florida in the dead of summertime. It just looks melted. It looks bubbly, wrinkled. It looks like a blob of leather. It's just weird looking. As you can see, my bag does not look like that. Now I have had this for a little over six months, so this isn't years old. But again, after a little over six months, she still looks almost brand new. And I use this quite frequently. As I mentioned, this is my most used or one of my most used Chanel bags. Now, I really attribute that to one of two things. One is the fact that I don't overstuff this. Obviously, it's a bag. It's meant to carry certain things. It's meant to carry my essentials plus some. And I absolutely use it for that purpose. But I don't overstuff this. Anytime I do put items in here, as I mentioned, I leave the zipper open, but things are not bursting at the seam 
means. Things are not about to spill out of my bag on a day-to-day -day basis. So definitely if you're thinking about this bag, consider the amount of items that you carry just to make sure that you're getting the appropriate size. The more items you try and stuff in it, obviously that is going to stretch out the leather and that kind of goes into my second point is when you're storing the bag. Now obviously with this bag, one of the really cool features with it is the fact that it has all of these chains. It adds a really cool kind of funky styling to it, but it also adds weight. Now when you're storing it, I do not store my bag sitting up. I actually store it sitting down. What happens with all of this, so all of these chains, it has weight to it, it has heft. So over time, what'll happen, because of how it is connected here along the sides, it will start to pull down on this material, causing a crease potentially in the middle or just pulling everything down. That's how gravity works. When I first got this, I was storing the chains inside of the bag and just kind of moving chains around from time to time to try and eliminate a lot of the, the creasing or the wrinkling. But I did notice, and you can kind of see a little bit here and here, that it was starting to crease a little bit. So what I did, again, instead of having the weight pulling down on these D-rings, I now store my bag laying down on its side and the chains are actually pulled out in front and I have it just kind of sitting on my shelf just like this. As soon as I started doing that, I did not notice these creases increasing any more so. This looks just almost just like it did the day I bought it. And so I really attribute that to how I store it. Now again, I store it on its side, but I also stuff it with bubble wrap. And the bubble wrap holds the integrity of the leather and I do flip it over from time to time. So a couple weeks, it'll be on one side. Next couple weeks, I will flip it over and it'll be on its other side. Is this excessive? Yes. Is it ridiculous that I have to do this to prevent my bag from sagging or getting droopy over time? Kinda, yeah. But am I willing to do it to maintain the integrity of my bag? Absolutely. When it comes to the Gabrielle, this bag really is like a tale of two bags. You have this top portion up here in this aged calf skin, which is phenomenal at hiding any kind of markings, imperfections, scratches. And what's really cool is the fact that it's crumpled. So over time, the more you use it, the more you're putting your items in and taking it out, the more of the, the crumpling or the wrinkling, the this kind of texture, the more it's going to add additional character to the bag. And I absolutely love that about this. I mean, this bag to me, I think you can dress it up, but for me, I typically tend to be a little bit more like business casually, maybe a little bit more casual with this bag. And so I think that the aged calf skin just kind of pairs with that, that styling very well. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. But on the flip side, the base. The base is hard, it is structured, it is non-forgiving. So when you are using this, it's really important to keep that in the back of your mind. That of course you don't want to have to baby your bag. And I don't I don't think I baby this, but at the same time I am very aware of my surroundings. If I see a, a child running by or running close to me with a sharp toy in their hand, I put my hand down just to create a buffer. If I'm going around a tight corner in a store or maybe even walking through a tight doorway and I don't want a, you know, a piece of metal or a doorknob or something to mark this bag, I will put my hand down just to protect this. So again, it's not necessarily, and again, I don't consider that babying, but you know, it's just being aware of your surroundings because while this top portion will show that kind of slouchiness over time if you don't take care of it. Another huge area of concern is this base. Now I have had this for over six months and you'll notice that I don't have any markings along the base. The front, there are no markings. The back, there are no markings. And the corners, both look really good. So it's not to say that this bag is prone to damage because again, I've seen a lot on the pre-love market that just look horrible. It really just comes down to how you take care of it. Again, I don't think that it's necessary to absolutely baby this bag, but at the same time, there are certain things that you can kind of take into account or take, 
maybe an extra step or so to protect this bag over time. With the Gabrielle, I would be remiss if I did not call out one of the coolest features with this bag, and that is all of the hardware. So with this bag, the straps, obviously you have all of these mixed metals, which I absolutely love. I think from a casual outfit standpoint, it just adds a little pop of something. If you are looking to dress this bag up a little bit or an outfit up, I think that this does really well. It just adds kind of a cool, funky, edgy vibe when maybe you're wearing silver jewelry and then your bag has a bunch of gold on it or vice versa. So I think from a styling standpoint, I absolutely love the chains. From a wear and tear perspective, I haven't had any issues as far as any of the leather you know, becoming frayed or getting damaged on these. The metal still looks really, really good. Nothing is tarnishing or looking bad in any case. And it's just holding up really well. Now, of course, in addition to the chains, you do have this strap here, which is very reminiscent. I think this is actually the same strap that's used on the boy bag. So I, I know that some people are weary with the strap that these little knobs on here will kind of catch pieces of hair and your hair gets wrapped around it and it gets yanked out. I have not had that happen to me. I have, you know, obviously long hair. I have thick hair. This has not happened to me. I think from what I've read, other people's experiences, it's been more if you have finer hair, it has a tendency of doing that, but that's definitely something to keep in mind. I have not necessarily had that happen, but again, it's a consideration with this bag. Now, from a styling standpoint, I absolutely adore this bag because of the versatility with it, but mainly with the straps. So obviously you can just double it up and wear it as a shoulder bag and it fits really nicely or it hits on my side very nicely. What I love to do primarily when I'm using this is twisting it a few times to create a crossbody bag and so in doing that again you kind of knot them up here on the sides and then it creates this embellishment on the front to where when you wear it crossbody it's just adding a little something extra to your outfit so I love wearing it that way of course you could wear it on your shoulder but again it may start to get a little bit long on your side I'm 5'5 five five, so normally I won't wear it like that on my side. If I am gonna wear it on my shoulder, I just will pull the strap up normally and wear it on my shoulder. There will be times where I will kind of twist the, the chains to create a nice kind of twisted look, which helps to keep all the chains and everything together and it just adds a different look to, to my outfit. In wearing it crossbody, I will mention that from time to time, depending on maybe the tightness of the knots there along the sides, over time, those knots will start to loosen and the bag does start to drop or it kind of goes a little bit lower past my hip, maybe down my thighs a little bit. So if you are one that wants consistency out of your handbag, that you know that every time you grab it, it's going to look a certain way, it's going to fall a certain way on you, then maybe the Gabrielle isn't the bag for you. But for me, I absolutely love the fact that I have that versatility and I can wear it crossbody when I want to, but it definitely does take a little bit of upkeep as far as when you're wearing it crossbody because over time those knots will slide so you do have to adjust it from time to time. It's not a huge pain, but I wanted to call that out. From a styling standpoint, one of the things I really like about this bag is how discreet it is. So obviously the front of the bag, the side, the back, it's not screaming Chanel. Really the only area that is branded is the pull tab itself, which I would say majority of the time I try to have it out, it falls on the inside. So it doesn't bother me. I, you know, again, that's not a deal breaker. I actually like the fact that it likes to stay hidden um, because just for added peace of mind for me while I am out and about, I'm not broadcasting that I'm wearing a luxury bag. So I like that. In terms of when I wear this bag, I've actually found that this fits my lifestyle a little bit better in the cooler months. So fall, winter, I think this pairs just really nicely with a bulkier coat a trench, maybe a wool pea coat, something that has a little bit of heft to it, I think this can balance out a bulkier item. So this tends to get a little bit more wear for me in the cooler months, 
but you could definitely pull this off, say in the spring or summer. Of course, depending on the event, this may be a lot of black in the spring or summer, but nonetheless, it's still a really great option depending on the occasion that you're looking to wear it for. Typically, I wear this bag more casually. So if you think going out, running errands, I will wear this or pair it with a hoodie, a little bit more casual outfit, like a t-shirt, long sleeve t-shirt or long sleeve shirt. I have paired this with a blazer before and kind of worn it more business casually and it looks really nice. So, you know, would I wear this to a, a dinner party or an event or a nice dinner? Probably not just because of the size of it. I think it's a little bit more casual, but if I'm just out maybe going to grab lunch with my husband or if I'm out shopping or just running errands, this is absolutely a great go-to. In terms of cost per wear, this is probably among the lowest within my collection. I use this bag a lot and so for me, spending the amount of money that I did on this bag that was maybe one, two price increases ago, um, I think I got a really great bang for my buck on this one. Again, taking care of this, it's gonna last me a really long time. And so I think if anybody is out there considering this bag, I would probably pull the trigger on it sooner rather than later. For me, the price point on this is creeping up to that threshold where I'd be like, yeah, no. But right now, I'd still consider it. So again, if you're thinking about it, just go ahead and do it. If you can afford it comfortably, I say go for it. There are some different colors out there available in boutiques and at department stores, so maybe black isn't your jam. Maybe you want something in purple or pink or tweed. If I had it all to do again, would I still get the Chanel Gabrielle? I would. The reason for that is because in terms of my personal collection, this fills a need in terms of having a larger, more casual bag. For those of you out there, maybe you already have something that checks that box or you have something that fulfills that need. So maybe the medium isn't the right size. Maybe a smaller size would be more appropriate. But again, that's going to come down to you and your collection. For me, I still love the size. I absolutely love the small version of it. I did try that one on in store before I ended up purchasing this one. And you know, just for my frame, I just felt better with the medium. Again, that's personal preference. There are other people out there who maybe this is too big, it's too bulky, and they would prefer the small. So that's where I love this overall style. I would still recommend this. As always, if there are any questions on the Chanel Gabrielle bag, please insert those in the comment section down below. Maybe you have this bag, you've thought about it, or maybe you don't like the bag and you want to comment on it, again, pop it in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a thumbs up, but I will catch you in the next one.